Hello and welcome to the Advanced Age Role Playing Years podcast. It's another Silver Alert coming to you from Gen Con 2024. I'm here with uh, Mike Mason, the creative director of the uh, Cthulhu franchise uh, with Chaosium. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks for seeing us today. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, great to uh, speak to you. I, I appreciate you giving us uh, the time to, to talk to our viewers and, and give us the latest and greatest. I was super excited when uh, uh, Cthulhu by Gaslight was announced. Uh, how, how's the, the reaction so far from the uh, from the fans? Oh, it's been uh, been awesome. We've been uh, uh, we've got some preview kind of sale copies here before it actually officially is released later this year. Uh, and those uh, copies that have been here have been flying off our stand like hotcakes. Uh, we had a really limited number of our really exclusive. Uh, uh, poison green leatherette edition of uh, Gaslight, and they went within minutes on the first day. Yeah, I saw like three minutes uh, <laughs> is what Brian posted. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing. Uh, give us the the background. Like, what brought up about the idea of doing a, a Cthulhu by Gaslight? Because we've been really stuck in like not stuck, but been based a lot in the 1920s for a, a long, long time. Uh, so, so why Gaslight? Okay, well. Interestingly, historically, Gaslight was, I think, the very first non 1920s setting done for Call of Cthulhu. Okay. Way, way back in the kind of uh, late 80s, early 90s, there was a box set, Cthulhu by Gaslight. And then over the years, there's been a couple of different editions, but for a, ooh, a nearly, well, 10 years plus, uh, they, it's not been in print really and not a new edition. And so we wanted to do a brand new edition of Gaslight, building on the foundations of the, the older kind of version, but uh, bringing it up to date with the uh, 7th edition rules for Call of Cthulhu and really kind of opening up the gameplay to make it uh, not just purely about the kind of the, uh, the fog shrouded streets of old London town, but actually the whole kind of the world of Gaslight, which is actually looking at continental Europe, the east coast of the USA, so Gaslit, uh, New York City and yeah, Boston yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and that kind of opens it all out. Now, obviously, our focus initially is on the kind of the uh, London and England of Gaslight because that's a kind of people kind of get what that means. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it is feasible that you could start playing maybe in London and your characters take a boat and end up in New York or Boston and then pick up some horses or get on a wagon and end up in the Wild West. Oh, because it's the same great. Period, same period, <laughs> yeah. so you could have some really interesting kind of quite you know uh, um, fantastic and really exciting kind of adventures that kind of go between these kind of almost unique settings, but actually in, in his, his historical terms, you know they're all happening at the same time. So yeah, you've yeah. got you've got kind of uh, you know Victorian uh, uh, people from Victorian society from you know Europe and England traveling to the West and being like fish out of water and equally you've got uh, people from the West like you know uh, uh, doing like a Wild West uh, carnival and shows back in England yeah and I mean and that's before you get into the whole kind of like you know fog shrouded back alleys and tenements of London town hiding dark secrets and eldritch horrors and all the mysteries that they contain. So uh, Gaslight is just full of possibilities and lots of really fun gameplay, basically. And that's why we wanted to really kind of bring it back and really do it justice. Yeah, I, I've always liked the uh, kind of the Victorian setting, but just just uh, I was going to ask you about other uh, other other areas and uh, just having a, a Wild West uh, themed game sounds super amazing and just. But when you said taking a boat, just the, the the shudder that went through me of imagining a horror on a long steamboat voyage from from uh, the, uh, England to to the U.S. is that's that's terrifying. So that's that's great. Yeah, I mean that, that's the beauty of Call of Cthulhu because the the horror can lurk almost anywhere at any time, and so it could be on the boat, it could be in your hotel, it could be in you know, it, and it's all based around that kind of horror mystery concept. So. You know, someone's gone missing, someone's been horribly murdered, some items been stolen. These can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And hey, murders and strange things happen on the water too. So I mean, from running up and down Big Ben in the middle of London to uh, trying to stop the hand striking, you know, 12 o'clock and that causes some ritual to open a rift in space and pull the old ones down to, you know, just picking off these dastardly cultists who are trying to, yeah. you know, take over the English parliament. <laughs> 
Anything is possible. As they like to do. As they like to do, yes. One of the other things I was, I was curious about too, with this, uh, uh, is this just a setting change? Are there new, any new mechanics or any new uh, rules or anything uh, exciting for people to try out with this, with this other version? Sure, yeah. So uh, Gaslight introduces um, a lot of new kind of um, period uh, appropriate kind of character occupations in terms of developing your characters and creating characters. So that's all counted for. But also uh, Victorian uh, society, uh, social class and your position in society is, is quite important and so there is some dynamic kind of rules quite 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 light rules and not heavy and bog you down they're quite yeah. light rules but again to help players and inform the uh, the gm about how to kind of um you know what what challenges might be if you are a working class kind of hero uh, trying to convince the police that you know you didn't you didn't murder these people the cultists did you know what what kind of you know uh, bonuses or challenges that might be uh, that might be incorporated so there's some mechanics to address that kind of thing there's a whole in the uh, we, we're releasing the gaslight investigators guide here and that's going to be followed by the keeper uh, mm -hmm. guide for Gaslight, which is all the kind of the secret stuff. Okay. Um, but within that, uh, you may have heard of a real uh, occult society back in the day called the Hermetic Society of yeah. the Golden Dawn. Uh, there's a lot of details about those kind of societies and the magic they did. And there's a whole kind of system for that that you can incorporate into the game if you wish as well. So there's lots of really cool little pockets of stuff you can actually just... Um, you know, layer into your game if you want. If that's the kind of direction you want to take it in a kind of a, a culty direction, you can. Yeah. If that's not your, that's not what you're after, you can leave it out. It's not integral, but it works seamlessly what's there. So it's very modular and um, addresses all these kind of things. And there's loads of cool new monsters and villains and things like that that you can, you know, uh, entertain your players with. So do you have any kind of uh, iconic villains from past stories or history that you uh, incorporate into this? Well, one of the things in, uh, in the original, uh, original gas site that we've, we've brought back is, of course, the Martian invasion, H.G. Wells, happens in Victorian England. Okay, yeah. Yeah? yeah. So we've left in Martian and Martian fighting machines. If you want to kind of do a kind of sci-fi... Martian attack on London or the world, we you have all of that. There's also a lot of really cool literary inspiration from that period. So uh, Camilla the Vampiress, uh, the um, um, such as uh, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, and all these kind of classic kind of villainous uh, characters that you can kind of intertwine into your game, whether they kind of just kind of play like the original stories or whether you want to kind of mix them up with the mythos and maybe yeah. Jekyll uh, is actually, you know, he's made a concoction, maybe flavoured with Herbert West's reanimation fluid, gone quite wrong and that's why he's turning into Hyde and maybe he's giving it around to other people and they're changing too. So it gives you a lot of inspiration to work from and develop your own stories as well as play through the kind of scenarios we provide in the books as well. You sold me like five minutes ago, but <laughs> but now you're just keep selling I'm me. I'm just teasing you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like you're you're saying all the things I wanted you to say. So, so like, well, I'm, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm sorry. I'm like I'm like buzzing over here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go go buy the book now. <laughs> See you later, Mike. Okay, we're done. Um, but so when's the Keeper book coming out? The Investigator book is officially released uh, later this year, and that is followed pretty quickly by the Keeper guide. Mm -hmm. um, they're, and they're the two core books. The player book, actually, I should say, has all the rules to play Call of Cthulhu in it. Yeah. So actually, you don't actually need the core seventh edition rule book to begin playing if you've not played before. Oh, okay. Because the, uh, the player book actually includes all the, all the core base rules. Um, the Keeper book, has all the uh, scenarios, villains, monsters, all the kind of secret society kind of stuff that you don't want your players to know straight away that you can introduce as you wish in the game. But following beyond there, we've got a whole Gaslight campaign coming. We've got a book of scenarios. We've got a keeper screen kit. All, you know, with more material in, more scenario, playable content. Starter kit just for Gaslight? Not yet. We'll see. We'll see. But who knows? Who knows? 
uh, as I mentioned last uh, last time we were uh, in your booth, uh, I love the RuneQuest starter kit. That's like one of the most well done starter kits I've ever seen. So I, I, I think you guys do a great job with that. So if you you do this, I, I, I think it, I, I think it's a great idea, and I, I only have great ideas. So. I'm, I'm making notes. I'm making notes. It's all good. You, you don't have to credit me in anything. So. Um, but yeah, is there anything else that that, that you think uh, people that are interested in the game should know about it? Um, um, really, it's 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 if you are an existing Call of Cthulhu player, it opens a whole new kind of world of gameplay for you with a lot of really cool new uh, gameplay kind of innovations, rules, uh, as well as really cool scenarios. If you're new to the game, it's a great introduction into the game as well because it 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 allows you to kind of get in and feel into a quite a familiar setting because sometimes uh, some people find the 1920s a little harder to get their head around, whereas Victorian, uh, they're a little bit more familiar what with Sherlock Holmes and all yeah. those kind of historical kind of TV as well as films that they've grown up with. That mindset might be a little easier to kind of get to grips with. So again, it could be more accessible for certain types of people. Uh, so again, depending on your interests, it should, you know, hopefully do what it says, which is give you great games and lots of fun, running around trying to battle the Cthulhu mythos, you know, and doing, you know, doing daring good and all the rest of it. <laughs> uh, that's fabulous. Uh, uh, thanks so much, Mike. It's, it's great talking to you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, coming out later this year, uh, as well as Keeper and, and, a, a, and a scenario, which uh, Cinemax, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, two, two scenarios in the Keeper book. Yeah. Okay. As, so lots of great stuff coming. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to uh, uh, torture my players with it. Uh, but thanks, everybody. Uh, we will see you next time.